In this video, I will be showing you how to use the cut command with cat command to get a specific part while doing or running any of your scripts. Also how to change the text color in the command line or in your scripts and change the format to. How to sort the processes by CPU usage. How to rename a lot of files by running only one command and use a specific name with a number sequence. How to check installed packages by date and time and who did install it. And find the patchy uptime and when was restarted or crashed. How to list files by last accessed and not last modified. And find which process using certain files. If you are not yet subscribed, please subscribe now for free tutorials and computer related tips. And now let us get started. So let's start by running cat sysconfig and network scripts. And I'm gonna call one of the configurations. You can run this for any of other files and you're gonna get a lot of information inside that file. But what if you wanna know only the type and you get only ethernet to use it in a specific script you can simply grip the type and then you're gonna find like type equals ethernet but you want only ethernet you can use cut so you can say cut and then specify the delimiter that you want to use which is equals so now you have that equal and then type gonna be like the first column and ethernet gonna be the second column. So I'm gonna go and like minus F and two and you get now ethernet. So you can use this against any of the files. I always use this while doing scripts to have it in a string or a variable to use it later on. For example, you can cat the file which has the host name to get the host name and use it. You can do that to all the configuration files, to the error pages, error logs or anything. So let's cat another file which I have it here for testing inside ECT user and I believe it's called test.txt. And inside that I have here Mike, Dan, Dina, Dana and here you can find like there is a comma. So I can run again that cat and again I just forget about the gripping since I don't want to grip something in specific or a specific line and I'm going to say cut minus D and this time it's going to be the comma, right? And then you can have like this one is number one, this is two, three and four. So I'm going to make three and you get like number three. You can also add this inside an array while doing scripting. Sometimes while I'm doing scripting or an installation script in a bash script, Python, whatever, I like to use colors to do formats of the installation or if there is a warning or something like that. So I always use something called teapot. Let me show you how do I use it. You just go echo. So if you go echo and test, you get test back. But what if you want to change the format of it? Simply, I'm going to before test we're gonna put something called teapot and smul which means underlined and then I want to change also the color so I'm gonna add teapot and then set af1 and that's for the color I'm gonna close it and it's gonna be test and I press enter and now it's red and underlined but did you notice that now everything changed to red like forever right so instead of ending it with text with test i mean just add another parameter and say like tput and reset it back to zero and close it so now you're putting the test in red with underline and then resetting it back to the default when you run the command ps, it's gonna list all the processes for you. Let's check the man. It's saying like it's a report or a snapshot for the current processes. Okay. So what if I wanna sort it by CPU or command or user or whatever? Simply just run 
PS and then I put minus E and then you put sort and after sort you can sort it by CPU, command, user, ID, whatever. So for this example I'm going to just run PCPU which means that I want to sort it by the CPU usage and inside the output you can go like minus O and say like I want to see the command, the CPU, user, and the ID. And you run it, and you get all the lists. What if you want to see only the top ones, which is taking the highest usage of the CPU? Simply, you can run head minus n 10, for example. I'm just going to show only the 10. But since this is this server has no usage, so all of them showing the CPU as zero. You can do the same. Instead of sorting by CPU, you sort by something else. Okay, the next command, it's a combination between the listing and it's gonna have a loop and also how to print certain data as a file names. So let us see that example. I have here a folder which is called file sort and inside file sort I have four files and they have different names and different extensions I remember in one project we used to have a daily files which were uploaded by the clients and all of them they had like different naming and we need to archive and backup those files with the same name and sequence number sequence how you do that in this I'm going to show you different tricks if you run ls, the files, you're going to see all the files. But if you run ls, and then for example, I put b, and after the b, I'm going to say, like, show me all the files starting from a to z, and then I'm going to put asterisk. So it's going to show me all the files which they start with b, which is only one file, which is banking. If I can do the same, if I'm going to do the same and remove B, now it's showing all the files starting from A to Z and asterisk means like all the files. So now I'm going to run that command to rename all the files and let me show you and explain again each part. So here I'm going to say like ls list all the files which start from A to Z and asterisk means like all the files and saying while reading each file, so I'm saying while read each file I'm gonna name each file like file do the following let's see that's another variable I'm saying like it's an auto increment so it's gonna be 0 1 2 3 and so on and move the file which is this file and name it with data and then add that sign and the number which is C 0 1 2 3 and the extension gonna be CSV. Let's run this. I did that before again. So now let us see what is the output. The output is data 01, CSV again. So let us run it again. And instead of data, we can say like, for example, dots way. And I run it. And again, so it's data, then 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. Not all installed packages are installed by YUM. Some of them are installed by RPM. To list all the installed packages used using RPM, you can run RPM and then query all. And then you're going to get all the list of all the RPM, installed RPM. But what if you want to check the install time, the name, the version, the release, or any other thing? Maybe to uninstall the latest installed packages. You can use RPM minus QA and then run minus minus QF, which means that you want to query a certain file. After that, you can run several things, stuff like install time, install time date, name, version, release, and other stuff. 
So I prepared some of them and I'm gonna just paste them right now like that. So here I installed, uh, I'm gonna show the install time and then the install time date, the name, and then I'm gonna put hyphen and see the version, the release, and the arc. Now if you run that, you're gonna get all the list. You can instead put a pipe and just check, I mean that just sort them and check the latest one by running tail and maybe five. Like that I'm getting only the latest five packages I just installed. And by the way, using the RPM, it would also check the, the uh, yum installed packages. But by using the yum installed, it's not going to show the RPM ones. Next command is how to find the Apache uptime or when it was restarted. To do that, we can use either Apache CDL status. And here it's going to show you how long it's been up. So saying like it's active since the last, last 14 hours. So maybe it was restarted before that. To check if there was an error or something, you can also check the error file or the error log for the Apache by running cat, then go to the var log and HTTP and go to the error file and grip only whenever it was last resumed. And you're gonna find when it was restarted or stopped and resuming again to the normal situation. There is one more command which I really like that can tell you what process or executable is using it. So for example, right now we were running the error log. What if you wanna know what process is using that file? You can run a command called fuser and it's not there by default, by the way. So if I run it right now, it's showing that, okay, error log is used by those process numbers. So you can simply just run PS and grip only that process. And then you're gonna find that this one is HTTPD. So you know that HTTPD is using that error log file. If you did not find fuser, just simply install it using yum install fuser. And you're gonna find that the name of this fuser is called psmisc. So that's it for today guys, until we meet again, bye.